All right, guys, this is another video here in the series of uh, describing sonar screenshots. There's a lot going on in this one. This is a good one because I think the guys that have never even turned the fish finder on yet can get something out of this, and yet the saltiest of salty dogs can probably get something out of it as well. Most of them won't be this complex, but there's a lot of good stuff in this one, so let's get to it. Fish on, fish on, fish on, right here. Crank, 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 crank. <laughs> fish on, fish on. Look at the screen. Oh my goodness. Holy cow. Is that a little better fish? I believe it Seems is. to be. I believe it is. Boys, this is nuts. This is absolute nuts. We got split shots on some, no weight on others. There's a screamer. Tommy, <laughs> Tommy, come get it, baby. <laughs> All right. We got a double. Eight lines out. We just had two other ones on. One just came off. Tommy had one on a jig. They were breaking in front of us. Let's see, can we do it? Get him to me, I got a short net here and a camera in my hand. There we go! <laughs> Woo! Oh baby! <laughs> you gotta oh, oh baby! That's a fatty! <laughs> Good job Joe! Team old school, thank nice. you for bringing me out! Look at the screen out here guys. All right, stick around. Bro, that is a nice eel fish on the Raritan Bay. TOS float. Old Good school, job. Baby. Good job, brother. Let's let him go. Right I got to say, that's this, one of the prettiest things I've ever seen in my life. Right? Right, that, right back down. Going right there. Good job, Let her brother. go, let her grow. Good job. All right, so we see we have four panels here. Top left corner, we have a transducer set to 200 kilohertz. It is an Airmar B175 high wide. The next panel to the right going clockwise is our down scan. That is an active imaging three in one transducer. The next to the right going clockwise is a B175 medium chirp transducer. Now, all of my transducers are chirp transducers, okay? Aside from the active imaging, which is a three in one, which has, you know, high chirp, medium chirp, down scan, side scan, 200 kilohertz fixed frequency, and 83 kilohertz fixed frequency. Anytime you're gonna see an AMR transducer, or basically when I'm using 2D, most of the time it's gonna be an Airmar chirp transducer, okay? The bottom panel is our side scan. We get that from our active imaging transducer as well. It's an 800 kilohertz, okay? On the top three panels right away, you're gonna see a bar right across the middle of the screen, right around 13 feet down. You'll see here by the arrow here, I'll put an arrow there for you on the left panel. That is the Picno climb. What that is, is the change in salinity. So the saltier water tends to sink, it's heavier. So particles in the water debris that will sink in fresh water may not sink in salt water. So it'll sink down through the fresh water, which is less dense, and will actually float in the salt water that is more dense. So you're gonna see that band of debris that's hovering there. That could be any particles, branches, leaves, just tiny microscopic stuff. And right away you're gonna notice that the fish are hanging below that pycnocline. It could be just a coincidence that that's where the temperature break is, but I believe they like that water that has a little, has a little more salinity to it. So just something to pick up on, something to notice. All right, 
lots of fish on this screen okay down on the side scan you can just see they're everywhere so the white bar down the middle of the side scan panel we're in the bottom panel now on the bottom see that white bar going down the middle that's the keel line of the boat now with active imaging one thing that I've seen that I have not seen in any other type of side scan and I know I sound like a broken record in some of my videos but I just I'm just so impressed with it is that it can show fish that are far from the boat that aren't just on the bottom so off to the right here by this arrow you're gonna see some fish that are far away from the boat they're about you know the 55 mark 60 mark you know from the keel of the boat there and you're gonna see that the targets aren't just sitting straight on the bottom the shadows are aren't right on top of them so usually if the shadow is right on top of your target it means it's right on the bottom okay now we know these fish are in the lower part of the water column we can tell that by our down scan and our 2d panels up top we can see it's at the picnic line and below so they're close to the bottom but they're not necessarily on the bottom so it's one thing that I've been so impressed with with my active imaging is I can pick up fish that are far from the boat that aren't sitting on the bottom so next time you're out with your side scan and you're on a big school of fish note are you seeing them far from the boat like over the bottom return what I mean by the bottom return is you'll see the section here between this arrow and between this arrow that is the bottom okay that's the bottom return are you seeing solid returns there or are you seeing just shadows and I don't mean just in the first part of the bottom I mean like all the way across that full stretch of bottom are you seeing returns all the way through there or are you just seeing the shadows that's one thing with active imaging that I've been so impressed with all right one other thing you're gonna notice here is in the top left panel here I have my high chirp transducer set to 200 kilohertz and why not chirp why set it to 200 kilohertz right well in less than 30 feet of water I find that my single fixed frequency settings give me a little cleaner image than a chirp setting so if you look at that same panel the upper left panel 200 kilohertz you can see a stack of striped bass on the bottom these weren't terribly huge fish these were in the 8 to 15 pound range we caught a mess of them so I'm sure of that you're gonna see the incredible separation especially like down here like right on the bottom on the bottom of all those returns you're still gonna see arches down in there in good separation with some blue in there now if you look over to the far right panel where I left my medium chirp transducer set to chirp you're still seeing all those fish but if you notice they don't look as defined it's a little more of a jumbled mess the arches aren't quite as defined we're going 3.7 miles an hour so we should see arches instead of long worms and we're still seeing separation on the bottom there but you can see if we're counting up those fish it looks like a whole lot less individual fish than the left side because we can we have just a whole lot more separation not a whole lot more but more you know it looks like there's more fish it's just because I Personally, with the characteristics of my chirp transducers, I've tested lots and lots of them for Airmar. And I find that in less than 30 feet of water, I get better results with a fixed frequency. I just get a little more separation there. Now, I don't want this to be confusing where guys say, oh, well, I only fish in 30 feet of water, so I don't need a chirp transducer because I'm always using fixed frequency anyway. No, no, no. I don't want that to be misleading. You definitely won't get the same results setting a less expensive transducer to a fixed frequency as you will with a more expensive chirp transducer. Uh, one reason is related to the Q rating. Airmar uses a Q rating on their transducers. The lower the Q rating, the less ringing, kind of like a tuning fork. The less ringing, the better. Some of the less expensive Airmar transducers, like the P66, have higher Q ratings. They're fine transducers, but you definitely won't see the same results as setting a chirp transducer with a low Q rating to a fixed frequency. There are lots of other technical reasons why that is, but I really don't know them all, to be honest with you. There's books and books and books of that stuff written on this. Real technical stuff, you know. So I'm sorry if I got a little way, got a little complex there. I, I hate doing that. 
but I, uh, one guy I told him, I said, I don't set my transducer to chirp until I'm at least 30 feet deep. And he says, well, I never fish 30 feet deep, so I'll stick with my inexpensive fixed frequency. And I said, no, 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 you will get, you will still see a huge, a, a huge performance increase with a chirp transducer, even if you set it to fixed frequency over an inexpensive transducer with a low Q rating, like a hundred dollar transducer. So uh, I hope that makes sense. All right, let's see what else we have going on here. That's about it on this one, I think. Looks pretty good. It's a great, great screen shot here to show you guys. One thing you'll notice too, with all these different frequencies going on, we have 200, we have 800 with the down scan and side scan. We have medium chirp, so that's floating anywhere between uh, 85 and 175 I think with this transducer maybe 165 I'm not sure exactly but all those frequencies happening all at once you notice we're not seeing a lot of noise again that's because of the high Q rating of these transducers even the Airmar I'm, I'm sorry even the Simrad active imaging transducer is such a clean transducer such a high quality unit that you don't see noise I don't have any interference filters on if you've watched any of my other setup videos, you know I hate interference filters. I never turn them on. Even if I get some noise, it's fine. I don't like using my filters. And you can see how clean these are. So I'm running multiple transducers here, getting a lot of clean shots. And I have to credit that with the quality of the transducers. The Active Imaging 3-in-1, the 2-in-1, amazing transducers. The best side scan I've seen. And of course, the Airmar strip transducers are just out of this world. So I think that wraps it up for this one. If you guys have any questions, any screenshots in particular you'd like to see, like, hey, Mike, I want to see, you know, compare this versus that or in deep water, shallow water. Now, I don't fish terribly deep, so you're not going to, I'm not going to have a lot of shots deeper than 100 feet, but uh, I can do my best. So if you want to see some at full speed, whatever, you know, just go ahead and put in the comments there, Mike, I'd like to see this if you can, and I'll, I'll do my best to get that out for you. If you guys haven't subscribed, I sure would appreciate it if you would and like this video that actually helps me more than you know. And I'm going to keep this series going. So I'm going to try to do at least one screenshot a week, maybe more. Stay safe out there. Leave a few for me. I love you guys. Mean it. Thanks for watching.